Between 1519 and 1522, Ferdinand Magellan's ship, the Victoria, made the first circumnavigation of the world. Of the 237 men on the voyage, only 18 survived. Magellan wasn't one of them because he died in the Philippines, but under another captain, the Victoria was able to cross the Indian Ocean, round the Cape of Good Hope, and return to Spain. 2016 marks another circumnavigation. This time it's the circumnavigation of Zika virus. The Zika virus originated in Africa and has travelled round the world and finally back to Africa again. Zika virus was first isolated in 1947 in the Zika forest, which is just north of Lake Victoria in Uganda. Macaque monkeys had been placed in cages in the Zika forest as part of a yellow fever monitoring operation that was going on. They didn't find any yellow fever in the macaque monkeys, but they found something new, which was Zika virus. It took about another decade before the first case turned up in humans, which was in West Africa. And in the ensuing years, there were a handful of cases appeared in other parts of tropical Africa. Studies to find antibodies against Zika virus also showed that the virus had been in several other African countries, in Kenya, in Cameroon, in Zambia, and even further north in Egypt. These studies showed that Zika virus was a flavivirus, a relative of dengue fever and yellow fever, but there were barely a dozen cases described in the medical literature for the 50 years after its discovery, and none of those were very serious at all. So Zika virus remained a very obscure tropical disease during that time. The next step on Zika's circumnavigation of the world was to cross the Indian Ocean, and we know that by 1966 it had arrived in Malaysia. Subsequently, clinical cases turned up in other parts of Southeast Asia, in Cambodia, in Thailand, and in the Philippines. And antibody studies also showed that Zika virus had probably visited Java in Indonesia and Bangladesh as well. Zika's fellow flavivirus, yellow fever, moved with the slave trade from Africa to South America. But Zika virus was unknown in South America before very recently. So it didn't move with the slave trade and that indicates that Zika virus was probably very rare in West Africa at the time of the 19th century when many slaves were being transported across the Atlantic. Zika virus probably moved from East Africa to Southeast Asia during the latter part of the, of the colonial era, possibly between British colonies in East Africa and British colonies in Malaysia. In 2007, we had the first large outbreak of Zika virus in Yap Island in the Pacific Ocean, possibly a few thousand cases. Another observation that came from the Yap outbreak was that possibly something like two thirds to three quarters of these cases were so mild that they had no symptoms at all. Zika virus's next port of call was in Tahiti in Polynesia. The Tahitian outbreak was even bigger than the one in Yap maybe 25,000 cases in Tahiti. Also, for the first time, we saw rather nastier symptoms associated with Zika virus. Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is an autoimmune paralysis. And also, retrospectively, we know for the first time there were cases of microcephaly in Polynesia, although they weren't identified as such at the time. In early 2015, the first cases of Zika virus appeared in Brazil, and Zika virus subsequently spread to other countries in Latin America and then into the Caribbean, further north to Mexico, and then most recently to Miami. The Brazilian outbreak of Zika virus was associated with the first appearance of large numbers of cases of microcephaly, as well as more Guillain-Barre syndrome. And the first deaths associated with Zika virus have occurred there. While Zika virus was spreading across Latin America, it was also spreading extensively within Brazil. It used to be thought that the 2014 World Cup was the entry point where Zika virus moved from the Pacific Ocean into South America, but phylogenetic analysis now suggests that that date's slightly too late, and Zika virus was probably already in the Americas by the end of 2013, at the time when the outbreak was still raging in Polynesia. Travelers returning from South America and in some cases the Caribbean and Southeast Asia, took Zika virus back with them to their home countries. So we saw cases appearing in parts of Europe, also in China, in New Zealand, 
in the USA and in Canada. Zika virus doesn't spread in these countries via mosquito bite because they don't have the right kind of mosquitoes, but we have seen a few cases of onward sexual transmission from travellers who have returned from tropical countries with Zika virus. The final step in Zika's circumnavigation of the world was its arrival in the Cape Verde Islands from Brazil. Zika also turned up in Guinea-Bissau, which is very close to the Cape Verde Islands, but the Guinea-Bissau Zika virus is the African variant and is not the variant that comes from South America. There's lots that we still need to learn about Zika virus. We don't have a treatment and we don't have a vaccine, so obviously those are very big research priorities for, for the near future. There's also many things that we need to learn about the basic biology of Zika virus. It is the American variant more dangerous than the Southeast Asian or African variants? Does that explain why we've seen more microcephaly in the Americas than we've seen in Southeast Asia or Africa? Or could it be that there's a population immunity in Africa, as we say, a herd immunity, given that Zika's probably been in Africa for several centuries, but it's a very recent introduction to the Americas and that that is having clinical consequences. So as we've seen, Zika virus has spread to almost every corner of the planet. We live in an increasingly globalised world, so it's really important that we have coordinated international efforts to tackle Zika virus.